A U.S. official telling Barbara Starr that this attack had been it dis had been ordered to go forward, but then was pulled back at the last second. Now, again, that's relatively easy to do, given that the U.S. has a substantial military presence already in the region, a number of strike aircraft, a number of ships that are capable of launching missile attacks against these proposed targets, which we're being told were Iranian uh, radar sites and missile batteries likely the same types of facilities that were used to target and shoot down that uh, U.S. RQ-4 drone, uh, which has kind of sparked this latest uh, increase in tensions. Unclear exactly what caused the president to pull back the operation relatively late in the game. We'll be looking into that, but we've heard nothing officially from the Pentagon about any of this, uh, not saying anything at all about what exactly happened last night officially, but we're, we're looking into what possibly could have caused the president to cancel this operation so late in the game. Allison? Ryan, thank you for the breaking news from the Pentagon. So Iran state television has aired images of what it claims is debris of this downed U.S. surveillance plane. CNN's Frederick Pletkin is live for us in Tehran with more. Fred. Hi, Allison. Yeah, getting some new information now from the Iranian military as well. As you said, we now have also video, not just uh, still images, of those uh, alleged drone parts. And as you can see on that video, um, a lot of those parts are very small, and a lot of them seem to be the outer shell uh, of that drone that, uh, or, or uh, allegedly of that drone, that the Iranians shot down. Now, the Iranian general who's in, in charge of the Revolutionary Guard Aerospace Forces, he just came out and basically confirmed why those parts are so small. He said that the plane was flying at an extremely high, or the, the drone was flying at an extremely high altitude of about 50,000 feet uh, when it was shot down and then obviously hit the water uh, very hard. And he says that the parts that we're seeing there are indeed mostly from the outer shell of the body of that drone. And he says the reason why the Iranians were able to recover those is because those were floating on the surface in Iranian territorial waters. He said the waters there is about 400 me uh, feet deep. That's why they weren't able to recover more of that drone. The Iranians also coming forward and now claiming, uh, still obviously, that that drone violated Iranian airspace, but also claiming now that the drone was warned several times by the Iranian military. They say that the last warning to that drone came about 10 minutes before it was shot down. So the Iranians obviously sticking by their story that they say uh, that this unmanned aerial vehicle violated Iranian airspace. Of course, we know the U.S. has a very different take on that, saying it was shot down about 20 miles off the coast of Iran, uh, which would put it, obviously, in international airspace. All of this, of course, as the tension between the U.S. and Iran continues to remain extremely high. Ryan was just talking about the fact uh, that apparently that strike on Iran had already been called for. The Iranians have not re reacted to that uh, report, uh, but they have said that if there is a strike by the U.S., that there would be what they call a crushing response by the Iranians. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of how tense the situation is here uh, in this part of the Middle East, the FAA has uh, told U.S. airlines not to fly in the Persian Gulf area, Strait of Hormuz area. And we know from several international airlines that they have already either canceled or rerouted flights, also not flying in that area. So massive disruptions in what is a very, very busy aviation corridor, guys. All right, Frederick Plekin for us in Tehran. Fred, we're lucky to have you there. Please stand by. Let us know if you do get reaction from Tehran about this attack that was apparently called off overnight. Joining us now, one of the reporters that first broke this story in the New York Times, Maggie Haberman, White House correspondent for the Times, uh, also a CNN political analyst. Maggie, let me just read a bit of the reporting here. And again, the Times was the first to have this last night. As late as 7 p.m., military and diplomatic officials were expecting a strike. The operation was underway as in its early stages when it was called off. Planes were in the air. Ships were in position. The strike was set to take place just before dawn Friday in, to, in Iran to minimize the risk to the Iranian military and civilians. But military officials received word a short time later that the strike was off, at least temporarily. We do have some new video from overnight at the White House. We have pictures of Mike Pence, the vice president, showing up there uh, at 8 p.m., uh, walking in there. You can see that there. So, Maggie, I guess my question to you is, you know, walk us through the reporting and the timeline here of how this unfolded. So our understanding is, and this is obviously still developing, but our understanding as of last night was that this discussion had been going on all day, they were initially in the Situation Room and then in uh, subsequent conversations. As of 7 p.m., the strike was supposed to be on. Um, and then suddenly, shortly before 8, uh, word was given that the strike was going to be pulled back. Um, 
We don't know specifically why. We don't know whether it might go forward at some point or whether that had been the plan. This is obviously unusual to a have such a thing happen and be have us hear all hear about it uh, relatively quickly. Uh, as was said here earlier, it's not um, on the show. It's not a huge surprise that they were able to get jets going, get planes in position, um, and so forth, and then not have any missiles deployed because we do have all these military assets uh, in that region. But look, this uh, we don't know what happened yet, so I don't want to speculate on why this order was pulled back. But we certainly saw yesterday in real time in public how uncomfortable President Trump is with, you know, going full out, being bellicose about Iran uh, and trying to balance the promises that he made during the 2016 campaign of no more foreign wars. Yes, we saw his ever changing moods, as we've called them, because first he was angry mm -hmm. that they had shot down this aircraft. Then he said, um, well, I don't think it could be intentional. So he had backed off and given them a big pass that he did, thought it was a bad mistake. And then I don't think that you launch a strike uh, or get things in position for, strike, for something that's not intentional. So these right. are the fluctuations that we just watched play out. Right, and I don't know how much of it is an actual fluctuation versus something that we saw a lot in 2016, which was President Trump saying two things so that people can hear what they want to hear, and those two things are often in conflict and sometimes said within the same sentence, as he did yesterday um, in, in public, in his public remarks about this. Um, but look, we're going to learn a lot more today about exactly what happened and why this was. We know that you know the president has advisors who supported this strike. Um, Mike Pompeo supported it. John Bolton supported it. Gina Haspel supported it. We know that the president himself, and we talked about this yesterday on this show, is not really comfortable with an engagement with Iran. This is not Syria. This is not like what we saw in 2017. Um, and so it's not a surprise that he's struggling with it, but struggling with it, if that is what it was, struggling with it up to the point where missiles are about to be launched and then pulling it back is what would be unusual. Admiral Kirby, who, who's been with us all morning, pointed out before one line that was in your reporting, which is that no one objected to the Times going forward with this, which leaves the That's impression correct. they're okay with this message getting out there, that there was an attack that was imminent or underway, then pulled back at the last minute. I don't know if that means that they're, they were okay with it. I don't know if it means that they just didn't want to raise issues with yeah. it. I don't know if it means that there were additional details that we didn't know and right. they didn't want to open the door to that. But certainly, we did not get a, you know, a, a please don't publish this uh, uh, pushback uh, it, it, that uh, from either from the Pentagon or from the White House. Um, again, there's a lot we don't know. I keep coming back to this, but this raised all sorts of questions last night as we were untangling this and when we were learning about it. And I, I think we will learn more today about, I hope we will learn more today about why the president, you know, rescinded his his approval for this strike. Um, I'm also curious to find out what legal justification they used for approving the strike in the first place. And for going around Congress. Right. And so this has been, obviously, this, this has come up at other times in this administration. And generally speaking, the, um, there has been an opinion issued where the justification was, well, the threat of escalation was not high, so therefore you didn't need congressional approval. I think it's hard to argue here that there's not much threat of escalation.